All right, so hey, uh, welcome and thanks for coming to another ACM Launch and Learn. And this edition or in the, today's meeting will be about ACM reports. If you notice from our previous, um, from our previous meetings, we, we started with the very basic things in ACM and those are the actual the ones that we get more questions on than anything else, identities, reports. We've been getting a lot of questions, especially in reports. So I'm gonna try to cover that uh, a little bit more. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's something that I want to cover with you is the ACM report options. What are the options that we have to report in ACMs? We have the uh, standard 28 predefined reports. That's the CAN reports that comes with the application. We can use the identity CSV export as a report, it generates an Excel file similar to what you get from the standard reports. So you could use that also as a, a, uh, a report. Again, I, I'm gonna cover each one of them in details. This is just a summary page of it. REST API, not my favorite. There is some performance issues in there. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. XML collaboration, it's definitely one of the best options we have if we are talking about large amounts of data. And ODBC connection, basically, here's my database, connect to it. Now go do develop your own reports and whatever you need to do in there. Okay. All right. So let's get started with standard reports. So these are the reports that come in ACM preloaded, ready to go. Okay. Those are the 28 reports in there. Um, they can be customized, not really customized, filters. So we can go there and filter the reports. And I'll show you, we're gonna jump into the, into the software in just a little bit. <laughs> we cannot add or remove any fields. Exist. That's why I say you cannot customize it because you just, you just cannot modify how the report looks and the fields that are in there. They're pretty static when it comes to that. And uh, they can be printed in two formats, Excel and PDF. Excel to me is the best one, so allow me to manipulate the data. Okay, um, on screen, so when you're running that on screen, you can uh, display a thousand records and you can print 2000 records. And we do limit that to make sure that we don't overtask the memory and the system performance if someone is just trying to generate a, a, a report accidentally runs a report for it's very large or, or, or a lot of operators running large reports, it would overtask the system for no good reason. Now, this is one of the biggest misconceptions on reports is that people think that, oh, I can only do 2,000 records. This is not good for me because I, I have more than 2,000 events in my report um, daily, okay? So that, that's not good for me, no problem. You can actually schedule a report and there is actually no limits in the amount of records that you can display. Really, the, the limit is, as I found out, is depending on what tool you're using to display that report, okay? And we'll, we'll take a look at that. And the scheduling is pretty simple, actually. You could go in and configure this report and it's scheduled to run in the next five minutes. That's also possible. So you can go do that and get that large amount of data in, in one of the reports. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So you'll see me jumping from this PowerPoint presentation to ACM and then back for the next slide. So I'm gonna interact between um, this PowerPoint presentation and ACM, okay? So here is ACM. I just have it logged in already. So I'm gonna go ahead and go here to the reports. You see that is reports in here, custom reports. We'll touch in custom in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and click there, reports. Here are my 28 different reports. By the way, if you curious that your report in ACM does not display all of them in one page, it's actually quite simple to do that. You go here in the little person figure there, go to my account right there, and then click here in job spec, job specifications, sorry back profile, not job specs. Job spec, we'll talk in a little bit. Go right here, items per page, okay? 
Um, I put 40, I found 40 to be an optimal number. You can put more than that, just be careful. If you do, then every page will take longer to load because it needs to load all those records that you are allowing to do. So it by default comes with 20. I put 40 and it found, you know, it's, it's a pretty good number to run that. So that basically show me all the reports in one page. Now the reports, here's the name of the report. If you have any filters applied to it, normally it's gonna say none. You see that I have some reports that have filters applied. This is for the edit, so you can click in the edit pencil here to edit the report, or you can click in the name of the report. Um, you're gonna notice it in an edit that is two reports that do not have that, is the audit right here, and also the transaction report does not have the pencil. So this was an experiment with the engineer that were trying to simplify this and, and remove this whole column and just basically give you the ability just to click in the name of the report and uh, go and edit that way instead of clicking in the pencil. Actually, like just in the name is easier. Um, so we'll see. Maybe if eventually they will remove this, this redundant uh, uh, column in here. Then you have the PDF. This allows you to generate a report in PDF and then Excel or uh, CSV allow you to generate a report in Excel format, okay? So for example, I can go here very quickly and just say, this is my transaction report. I can just go here and click on that and this will generate my report for the last, in this case, I have a configured for the last seven days, okay? A um, Couple of reports in here that are important, audit, alarm report. So this is one that is focused only in the alarms. You have all the reports here. Audit will give you information and who changed what record at any given time. Someone uh, now doesn't have permission to access this area. Who changed that? You can go into the audit report and look into that, okay? Uh, the other reports, I'm not gonna touch a whole lot of them. Uh, basically, I'll focus in the transaction report because this is the report that will give us all the transactions, all the alarms, um, badge reads and any type of information, any type of event that's happening in the system, you will see in that report is basically a catch all, okay? So I can go ahead and just run the report right here by clicking that Excel uh, PDF or in the Excel. Now, if I wanna customize the report, I can go ahead and click on the name of the report and this screen comes up. Once again, I can click in the reports and print the reports right there. I have this screen with those columns in there. And down here I have the searching capability. This is where I can go in and add filters, display the number of records. I can go from anywhere from 10 to 50 and uh, moving between records, go to a direct page or clicking the refresh button right here. When you click in this refresh button, the screen is populated, okay? So this will give me a quick view of this is what's happening right now. And as you can see here, only gives me a thousand records, right? So that's display on screen, a thousand records. If I print the report here, will give me 2000 records. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna go click in the, in the PDF. Be aware the PDF does take longer to run because it needs to gather the data and then build the format and PDF and display on screen. So this, here goes, right there. And as you can see right over here, 2000 records limitation. And this is a pretty static format. Unless you have PDF writer, and even if you have that, it will be uh, a little bit of work to go and edit this report if you wanna do that. That's why I prefer to use the Excel. So that's, again, that's PDF format right there. Pretty static, not a bad report, it's just static. I cannot do anything with this data. Now, if I click in the uh, Excel, this will bring Excel format and you can see how much faster this is. And by the way, this is taking longer because I have some reports already loaded on memory here on, on Excel. So that's why it's taking, it's usually much faster. And from here, I can go ahead and manipulate this data um, I can add some filters into Excel, right? And now I can take full advantage of Excel. Hey, I wanna see a, repair, a report only in Donald Duck. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and here. Yeah, I have Disney characters in my system, if you guys don't know that. So here is Donald and Daisy, and just like that, I can go ahead and, and have a report set um, 
in Excel. Uh, again, because I'm printing this directly from ACM, not scheduling this report, I can only do 2,000 records. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close this report. Again, you can filter this and manipulate this data as you need it. So that's why I like using this particular one. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and close that. Back to Excel, back to ACM. Uh, if I click in the search right here, I can now go and change um, the information I need. I can go and filter data. Hey, I have a report for seven days. I wanna do now for 14 days and I want to add some filtering capability. I personally don't add any of those filters. I just put the amount of records I want, and then I'll send that to Excel, and I can go in Excel and filter. It gives me ability to have all that raw data, and now in one file, manipulate it anyway, add any filters I want. I found that to be much faster, much more um, handy than, than doing this. But I can go here and say, um, I want to see the last 14 days of just one reader, and I'm going to pick my reader four. This emulator right here. So I have four emulators running in my system, and this is why the data is being uh, set. If I want to add more, I just got to type, keep typing. Save is the key here. If you don't save these parameters, this will not display the data. And I, if I just do the refresh right here on screen, this will now just show data from reader number four. It says right there, number four. Okay. And I can go and add more filters. So let's do um, search for a last name. So let's do Mickey. I'm going to go ahead and enter mouse. I'm going to do Mickey and Mini. Okay. Hit save. You see there is a bunch of pe different people in here. Go ahead and hit refresh again. And now it's just Mickey and Mini. And I just want to do um mini so go ahead and enter first name save refresh again and now it's just mini okay i don't want any of those just click the x and you eliminate all the searching criteria. okay then hit save so those are the kind of things you can do. Now, here's what you can do as well. Let's say I want a 300 days report, okay? And if I print this report, I know I'm only, if I, if I refresh here, go ahead and hit save here. So 300 now, right? I'm gonna hit refresh and this will continue to display only 1000 records. And if I try to print this report or send this to um, to Excel or PDF, it will give me 2,000 records. But I need those 300 days, which will be a way more than that. So what do I need to do? You can go here and create what is called a custom report. So let's say uh, last 300 days, it's save or hit this button here, create custom reports, and this will take you here to custom reports. Now that I have my 300 days custom reports in here, I can, uh, I already had this recorded, right? So I didn't save the other one. I can go here to schedule and schedule this report. So let's call this the 300 days report. I want this report to be in CSV, always in my case, because I want to manipulate that data. I'm going to go to the next screen. And then uh, from there, I can go ahead and schedule that. Sometimes I have this thing with my browser. So let me do that again. Uh, push this guy up here. CSV. Yeah, it's tricking on me right now. Okay, the idea is this. You're going to go and create that report. You're going to schedule it. Let me refresh this screen just in case. Um, and once you schedule that, it will give you the ability to... There, that's what I was looking for to set the day that I want. So let's say I want to do one day. So I want to do this report and I want to do it right now. So I can just go here, pick now. And let's say I'm going to do a couple of minutes from now. Hit event, hit done here and, and go next and go ahead and schedule that. Or I can say, you know what? I want this weekly. I want this report on Monday at 8 a.m. And I want this report to be emailed to me. And now I can go ahead and hit submit in there. Okay. Once I do that, 
go ahead and hit submit. Now I can go here and choose job spec. Okay. And here in job specification, you're going to see the report that I just created. I'm going to go ahead and enable this report. Okay. Can go ahead and enable this report here. And depending on the date that I put in here, in this case, I, I set it for Monday, every Monday at 8 a.m. But I could, in my schedule, I could say, just create this report in the next 10 minutes. And then from that point, the report is going to run. And it's going to run with the amount of data that you're requesting. So in this case, I put 300 days. This will take some time because I already done this report. I have them loaded up here to show you. And this is the report that I get. So similar to that transaction report you saw me doing on screen in just a minute ago. But this report has a little bit more data. I didn't know this, but Excel tops it up at 1 million records. It will not, the report was actually bigger than that, but the Excel could not handle more than 1 million records. So that's uh, a pretty large amount of data that we can handle. And uh, stay tuned, because I'm going to show you another way that I can actually pass this limitation in Excel in a different reporting system for large amounts of data. But so again, just going back to this, some misconcepts of, oh, ACM can only display 2,000 records. Not true. As you can see right here, I can go, not display, sorry, report. Display is 1,000 records. On screen report, it will be 2,000 records. But if I schedule this report, I can do way over that 2,000 limitation. Okay. So again, a misconcept that we can only do 2,000 records. We can do way more than that. In this case, here in Excel, uh, more than a million. Okay. And from here again, I can go ahead and manipulate this data any way, shape, or form I want, filter it out for specific records and, and so on. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this report here and go back to reports. And you can basically... Um, do other reports in here, but once again, I would suggest if you, if the customer wants to see events happening in the system, this is the report that you want to use. And a good advice is once you're done with your report, you might want to go back there and reset the report. So you can go ahead and click this reset button in here. So it eliminates the, um, the settings that you had before. So when you look in reports, you'll be able to, now there is no data in there. Anyone that has access to reports will be able to see if there is a filter added to this report. So especially uh, if a customer is in HR or doing a research on someone, you wanna make sure that when they're done, they go back and, and reset that. Otherwise, other operators will be able to see that what they're looking for, okay? So just, just a little tip there in how this works. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the um to the to the uh, um presentation so again we covered the 28 reports that are there you can go ahead and filter them on you learn that hey i can do a thousand records on screen pretty quickly i can do that i can print two thousand and if i need large amount of data i can go ahead and schedule uh, i can schedule a report and i could schedule a report for you know the next five minutes and this will run. So just be careful that the report, once you run on that schedule, depending on the amount of data, it will take some time. I run that report for 300 records. I have a lot of data in my in my system and my emulators are running a, a lot of data. They're putting a lot of data in the system. It ran for all night. So just gotta be careful when, when you're doing that, okay? All right, let's take a look in the next item. So is the CSV export. The identity CSV export. So I could use that also as a report. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So if we go in identity, you're going to see that, especially here in my system and some customers out there, here's your typical record. Guys in the ACM side have seen me using Donald all the time in my presentations. It's because I have a lot of data added to it. So you'll see that this, all these fields, all these um, tabs that you see over here, I use are defined tabs. So this is not part of, of default ACM. So I added those fields. I added those tabs. 
And now I want a way of reporting this, right? In our standard reports currently, we do not have that ability. We're working on it, but it's not there yet. So the way you can report on those or pull the data out of ACM is by going over here into collaborations, going into create a new collaboration, and you're going to create one for identity CSV export. Okay, so you create one of those. Okay, I already have one configured, so I'm going to go ahead and show you that. So here it is. So it's configured to put the file in a share folder, in this case, in my own computer. And when I run this, this um, report, I can just go ahead and run it in there. What's going to do is create this PDF or this, uh, sorry, this uh, Excel report. So it gives me all the data that is in the identities, including all the user-defined fields. So here's my user-defined fields, this whole area here. You can see here that I have a, a UDF called license plate. I have one called the large text box. And if you see that text box is one down here, it can hold, each one of those fields can hold up to 65,000 characters. So you can hold a lot of data in there. So if the customer wants to export that data or that identity data, that's one way of doing it. Also, I could export that with a transaction report and then use Excel to do maybe a VLOOKUP to go ahead and, and, and merge the information from a transactional report, right? Badge reads with this type of information this uh, this identity information if the customer is looking for that okay that's one way of doing it without going into developing something to merge the data so that's uh, another option in a sim again collaborations identity export to uh, generate that uh, that report okay go ahead and back to the presentation so again that's uh, identity CSV export. The next item I want to cover with you is REST API. This one for reports, it's a little bit tricky because REST API is not a very robust, performance-wise robust system. You don't want to be trying to generate reports using REST just because it sends those commands into ACM. This will overtask uh, the application. So not the best option to run reports unless you, you're running a report that's very specific and a small amount of data. You're looking for something very particular, then might be a solution if the customer wants to develop their own interface to that. So again, we will give you access to the REST API. Uh, the customer has to sign up. There is a forum that we have, an engineering forum that they can participate, but the customer will have to create their own interface. In the REST API, um, we provide the functionality, we provide the API. Customers have to develop their own interface uh, to, uh, utilize that. Again, REST API, best application is bi-directional data integration. I want to send some records to ACM or I want to send records from ACM to a third-party application based on a condition. That will be the application for that. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next item. This item will take us a little bit longer to cover because it has more information, which is the XML collaboration. And if you remember in my first slide, I said this for a large amount of items, this would be the preferred method. And the reason for that is because we're pushing data away from ACM. So here's a graph or here's a, a workflow for you just to, to understand how this works. So here's a reader. Someone is going to go over there, present a card, and that event, that transaction, that card event, either valid, invalid, unknown card, whatever that is, is going to go to the controller, and the controller is going to send that to ACM, to the appliance over um, Ethernet, over TCP IP, right? So it gets into the appliance, 
and then the appliance, the ACM application, will write that into the ACM transactional database, which is a Postgres SQL. If you have a collaboration, or, and by the way, and then from there, you can go and print through the ACM reports, the same can reports we just saw, the 28 reports that we just saw in there. In this particular case I'm talking about will be that transaction report that we saw. The transaction report here from ACM is pull information from here, from the um, PostgreSQL transactional database, okay? Another way of doing this is to send this data over an, X, an XML collaboration into a what is called an XML receiver. So the same time that ACM is writing this record into the transaction is also sending out using an XML uh, pipe is sending this out into an XML receiver. So XML is a standard format on the internet that allow other applications to receive that data in a common format and pick the information they want from that record and utilize in a third party application. So in this case is he is the receiver receives that data, right? So ACM is sending data to a particular IP address and a particular port. It sends the data in there, the data is received by that device, by that application, and then that application sends it to a database. And from that database, now the customer can utilize a reporting tool or can utilize it to feed a third party application, okay? Um, this whole, receiver, external database, and reporting, in some cases, one that I'm gonna show you is one application. This whole thing is just one application that's receiving the data, putting it in its own database, and then using a reporting generator tool to go in that external database right there and pulling the data and formatting and doing the, data, the reports the way they need it, okay? So that's XML. So let's take a look in ACM how that works. So we're gonna go over here. First thing we need to do is create the XML um, collaboration. So we need to go in ACM first, make sure that the customer actually has that um, XML event collaboration right there. Okay, so that's uh, the license they will need to be able to do an XML uh, collaboration. Then we're gonna go into collaborations and we're going to create a XML. I call this a Splunk because that's the tool that I'm using. Uh, it's a generic XML collaboration. So basically, here's what you do. You pick generic XML. Uh, participants, in this case, I'm not applying. Uh, this will be to hide this record in a particular partition, okay? And then here, I would go ahead and set the IP address and the port. In this case, I require TCP to send the data to the other side, okay? And this is the receipt. This is where the receiver, uh, the XML receiver is sitting. And then on this page, I want to send data 24 seven, or I could specify uh, when I want the data. Maybe I just want to send the data during business hour for some odd reason. I can go ahead and do that. And then I can go ahead and pick what types of events I want to send. You might, you might say, I just want to see valid and invalid credentials, so I can go and pick that. In my case, because this is a demo, I'm basically sending everything to the receiver on the other side, and then I'm gonna go ahead and filter. So I wanna receive all records, and I'll filter on the other side as I need it. So on this ACM side, that's it. That's all we need to do. Now, from this point on, is the end user's job to configure their application to receive this XML communication is XML records and utilize that to do what they need to do, right? So in our end, our job is done. It's quite simple. Again, XML, IP address port, TCP required, and then pick the events that you want to send, hit save, done. Put a schedule there, right? Hit save, done. That's it. ACM now is sending the data out. Now, we're hoping that it's someone on the other side picking this data to be able to manipulate it. So here's what I've created. So if I go over here, you're gonna see that my system has this option for Splunk. Um, this is just a tool, okay? I don't want us to focus, oh, Splunk, oh, great. 
This is just a tool. And I chose this tool because in my case, it's free. So if you have up to 500 megs a day, this is free. So it's a great tool to do demonstrations for customers where they can do either using Splunk or any other application that is capable of receiving XML. To give an idea, uh, SQL is capable of receiving XML transactions. So they could use a SQL table or a SQL database and from there generate their own uh, their own reports. Okay, so all right, let's go ahead and go to Splunk and just gonna show you my Splunk emulator. So I've created this and yes, it's all colorful and pretty just to show customers the capabilities, right? So this is, what this is basically doing right now is looking all the events that my ACM system is sending over here and displaying. So I can go change the, the types of reports I wanna generate. I can, I'm doing every, I'm doing hourly now. Uh, I can do real time, I can do all sorts of things. And then there is more. So this is all the events running an emulator and a pie that shows uh, the amount of events that are being generated. Just another way of seeing that same, the same graph over here. Only inputs, so now I'm filtering data. So I'm looking into that XML uh, um, records that are coming into this database and I'm, and I'm asking the system, go look at that and just pull the records that are related to input points and alarm. This one is the activated tokens. Here is valid transactions, invalid and unknown. And I put a graph in here that I'm still trying to figure out what this means. But basically it looks nice, a nice big number in there. And, uh, uh, and over here is the actual events coming in from ACM, okay? That's one way of doing it. I'm gonna show you a couple of more things so you get a feel for the things that we can do. Um, just to give an idea, this, this database has 6.5 million records and I've been sending data to this uh, Splunk for the past four years. My system, just my emulators keep running and they just keep sending data to this system. I can go here now and look for any type of data. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type Donald and it's gonna look for Donald in all my events for the last 24 hours. So if I click that, this is gonna come up. So if you wonder how a XML format looks like, right there in front of you, this is how actually looks like, okay? There's a lot of stuff in here. Yeah, looks rubbish. Uh, it, it looks really um, weird the way it is, but um, you can see this, the name right there, Donald, the last name should be over here. Here's Donald Duck. Uh, the name of the door, local grant is the type of event is right there. And this is all information that runs behind the scenes, how our system treats this information. Okay. So again, we sending this out to um, a receiver. In this case, I'm using Splunk. And from here, I can go and generate reports. You saw, you saw that one report I generated. Here's another one. In this case, I'm only looking for valid grants in four different readers. So here's my emulator reader one, two, three, and four. And this is a span of every minute. And every minute I can go here and see how many records I got in that 1221. And you see there's nine, the bottom left of that box, bottom right, sorry, the bottom right tells you how many records I got in there. Again, just a tool, right? I use this tool just to generated report. So if you remember seeing an Excel format, I was limited to a 1 million records, right? It's quite a lot, but it's limited to that. This one, uh, that is not a whole lot of limits to it. I'm sure that is a limit, but we're not going to hit that limit here. And the best part is now I'm offloading this reports from ACM so I can literally go in here i'm gonna go ahead and pick up uh, pick back my uh my standard report i'm gonna show you something that i can go and do very quickly and that is zero tasking in acm so go ahead and show me not the not the last 60 minutes but let's get all day today how many records i got right there or show me the records that i have in the last 30 days so here it is, it's gonna refresh this 
and it's going to put the last 30 days of records in here. Okay? And again, not tasking ACM. So ACM continues to run and do what it's doing, and this type of reports are now running in a different application. That to me is the best part of using an external reporting system, especially for customers that are using large amounts of data and they want to have reports. For your standard um, system out there, for your standard small business, no, this is not necessary. They will be fine running our reports. They can even schedule our reports and send that, as I, I did that in the, uh, um, in the example before, you can send those reports to uh, my Excel um, file or, or even schedule that report, send me that report every Monday morning at 8 a.m. and put that on my email address, right? All those things for your typical uh, utilization of ACM, you don't need any, anything else. You can do everything from ACM. If you have a customer that, that requires large amount of data, then maybe an external tool is the way to go, okay? And they can either use a tool like this that is pre-built, is ready to go. They'll, depending, again, depending on the amount of data, they will have to pay for subscription or whatever this. I don't even know how this is paid for because, again, mine is a free version. I don't use more than 500 megs a day, so this is free for me, okay? So collaboration. That's how we go about doing a collaboration and, and sending data out of ACM to an application that can now generate any type of report a customer wants to, to generate. Okay. Very well. I'm going to go back to my... Um, I'm going to go back to my um, presentation. So once again, that XML... So what you saw in Splunk, it was right here in this graph, right? I have a, a data receiver that I had 6 million records that is housed on a, on a database that hides somewhere in the computer that I have running this. So this is Windows computer running XML, and I'm just pointing ACM to and say, send data over there, and that system is going to deal with it. I don't care. It's now up to that system to do whatever it needs to do, right? And the report that you saw me running and here, that Splunk report is based on that data that I'm collecting on that side. Okay, again, that XML collaboration does require one license. So you need to put one license from there. You can create as many collaborations as you need. Okay, all right. Next one, and this will be the last one. ODBC connection. So we, if you notice, we're increasing the level of difficulties, right? So we started with the very basic reports. And now <clears throat> we went to, sorry, um, we went from the very basic reports to display on screen or um, generating that PDF or Excel and then we scheduled the report so I could get more data out of it. And then that was not enough. Okay, so then we went to the Splunk solution or, or XML solution to send that data to a third-party application that's pre-built, and it can generate report with a little effort, right? So that we, with that, this is the last one. This is all effort in. So now you have to literally, you're going to connect to our database, and from this point on, have fun, right? You're going to need to create your own application, understand where the data is in our database, and pull the data out and report the way you need it. This also gives you the most freedom because we're connecting directly and pulling the data. One drawback in this is if the customers connect to our ODBC, connect to our database, and they start to generating a lot of reports in this, this will impact performance in the system. So we have to be very careful with this. Ideally, this is used to go and look something or in a particular way, I'm pulling data in a particular way that I need it, but I'm not tasking the system a whole bunch of reports every day, every hour, every minute, right? This is, you have to be very careful. So if you have customers that need something like this, make sure they come to us, make sure that they engage the, uh, the sales engineering team 
and we can go ahead and, and have that conversation with a partner, with the end user about, you know, which way is the best way of doing this, okay? So let's take a look at that. So um, I have an application that runs in here. Um, and basically, this is what you need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and um, get out of this. Ah, Splunk's still here. Look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here and show you how this whole process works in a nutshell. You need to go to a ODBC driver in your Windows machine. And this is on the client computer where you have either the development kit or, you know, how you develop, how you're connecting to ACM, okay? And you're going to go ahead and create a, a ODBC connector to the ACM. And basically is the IP address. You need to have a username and password that can connect in ACM and a port password. And, and if you do everything right, then you should get that successfully connected. Okay, great. Now on ACM, okay, even before you do that, in ACM, you need to go and create a user. And now you're going to see why we have this. You're going to create a user. And this user with a username and password, you're going to click this right here. Allow remote access. This is also is a misconcept in ACM. People think that, oh, I'm going to connect from the outside of my company with my smartphone or my tablet, so I need to enable that. No, you don't. That is only used if you want this user here, in this case, ODBC as how I name it. Um, this is just my browser putting that, don't let that mislead you. Um, it will let the, this user connect to the database and this particular user will be the conduit between ACM database and that ODBC connection, okay? So, to create that ODBC connection, you first have to create a user here and make sure there's allow remote access is turned on. So once again, be very careful with that. If you have customers interested in doing this, tell them to come talk to us first. Don't let's not have them trying to do this on, on their own because we just don't know what kind of tasking they're going to give to ACM. And then if the system start misbehave or doesn't have the performance they're looking for, then you know we know you know maybe it's because they're overtasking the system with reports that you know we might have a better solution for them. Okay, so all right, so I got my user, I got my ODBC connected. Then what? Then you can use an application. I, in my case, I use this called Maestro. It's a PostgreSQL. You could use SQL, uh, SQL Studio, or anything like that to go and connect to the database of ACM. In this case, is the transaction report is read only. And I can go and pull data out of this. So here I'm connected. Here's the whole table in ACM. So all the tables are there. All the uh, views are there. And if you notice, this is the actual data in there. I had this preloaded because this database has 9.5 million records. And I'm connected to it. And I can go ahead and utilize this data. I can go and export this data if I want to. The whole 9 million records. Okay, uh, it's uh, just got to be careful if you try to do this to Excel, as I learned in the hard way, it will only give you 1 million. You will export 9 million, then like, ah, no, sorry, 1 million. Okay, so there's other ways, obviously, but that's how you can go ahead and connect. So you're literally looking at the database, the PostgreSQL database in my demo system right now uh, with all the records. So you can see here the name of the source, there's inputs. This is all the events that are happening in my system. Um, and this, um, the, the username, the type of event. So this is event numbers over there. So there's a bunch of other things in here. Obviously, it's more technical. Uh, this is why I was saying if someone connects to this, they first need to understand how this works and um, you know how you pull the data, how do you, how you make sense out of the data that is in this database. Again, if you have customers interested in doing this, have them getting in contact with us. We don't do it for them, right? So we might put them in contact with third party companies that are specialized in doing that, or at least we can give them some information and where things are and, and, and things like that, okay? All right, so 
This is the last item that I had to show in regards to reports. Let's go ahead and open up for any questions. You can either open up your mic and talk, or if you shy and prefer to do the chat, by all means. Questions? I'm going to leave with this plunk open because it's such a colorful, nice report. No questions. I think I put everybody to sleep. Nah, still awake. Okay, good. Because I thought I was talking to myself here for the last 47 minutes. So that would be interesting. <laughs> no, <we're, laughs> but I, but I lost everyone, right? So any mm -hmm. questions, folks? So let me go back to the Excel here, just, I mean, to the uh, presentation, just to leave here the, uh, the summary page with the types of reports we can do right there. Okay. Um, this is again, right? When recapping real quick before we go, if you don't got, uh, if you don't have any uh, questions, standard 28 reports. I this will be most of the customers will utilize that to run your typical what happened in the last seven days type of scenario, right? I want to know all the transactions that I had in the last seven days, right there, okay? Or who changed the uh, who changed the application or who changed the permission of this person last week all oh, there, right? I have some information uh, in, in user-defined user fields. I did not understand that question. Um, we had some information on user-defined fields and I want to report on that. Okay, so I'm going to use the CSV export. Right, REST API again. Ah, eh, no. Have have the customer talking to us. We can talk to them about that. Not ideal for reports. XML collaboration. Large amounts of data. Right. I want to have some analytic information. In average, how many people goes through my front door in a weekly basis, or how many people goes in average in, in every door? Because I have such a large facility now, I can predict which doors is going to need maintenance more than others, right? So I can do preventive maintenance, things like that. That will be ideal, that, that XML type of report because it can give me real time or I can load lots of data and pull that information out. And then lastly, the ODBC connection is where is hands-on, you need to go and connect your database and create your own report, create your own data, create your own everything to pull the data out, right? And that will be for a very specific type of scenario that we hope you bring them to us so we can talk to the customer, us meaning the sales engineering team, that we can bring to them and, and let them know what's going on, okay? Do we have any questions? Let's see here. Um, ta -ta 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 -ta. Can I get a copy of this recording? You certainly can. And thank you, Rob. Rob already sent that out. So the same uh, the same box account that we put the other two. So we're going to put all this lunch and learns in that same box account. So if you're already there, you have them all in that same uh, in that same uh, account. Okay, in that same uh, location. Any questions? Hey, Francisco, the only thing I can say is maybe if you go back to like the predefined reports, like in transaction history, maybe mm -hmm. run through the uh, like the, the the categories of what you can select. So there's just a good picture of, of ah, what's in there and how it works. Absolutely. Let's see. We got what? 10 minutes left. Why not? Let's do that. Good one. All right. So let's go back here. Uh, reports. Good one, Andy. Thank you. Um, transaction reports again, right? So there's no pencil there, right? So if you click in pencil, it basically is the edit. You go and edit the report. Just click in the edit right there. Just click in the name of the report. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and click here. And this is to give you filters, right? Is if you notice, I can add or remove filters. And the filters are I can use a specific date. Not ideal, right? Unless I'm looking for something in specific. I'm looking for all the events that happened three weeks ago on Monday. Then this is great, right? Because I can go here and say I want to use uh, three weeks ago on Monday right there. And starting from 9 a.m. Okay, done. And I want to add... Uh, less than that same day. I'm just going to go at it right there. Let's say 11 a.m. 
So I'm looking for an event that happened within that window. Okay, let's save that. My emulators my emulators don't run constantly. Let's see if we're lucky because maybe this what I put in here has no data. Ah, uh, has one data. Has one data record. Okay, um, but you get the idea. So that date is great for that. Now, if I want to receive a report that shows me uh, a, a predefined number of days, then date uh, panel date range better because then I can just go here and say, given the last seven days and email me this report every Monday morning under a schedule, right? That's better. Then what else I have here? I have events. So I can go here and say, I'm looking for a particular event and that event is only uh, attempting to open lock door. Let's see if I have any, I should save that. Run on screen there. Okay, so right there, attempting to open a locked door. So that means my front door was locked and someone is presenting a badge to it and it cannot open it. Okay, so and all the other events are right here. So depends in what type of event you're looking for. What else there, event type, right? That's more generic not more, and not in details, right? So it's not the event name itself, but the type that belongs to, right? In this case, invalid credentials, his communication, I had a mic. Uh, I had a controller that went offline last week. Hmm. Let's take a look when, right? I might put communication in there, and go ahead and hit a refresh here or print the report, and this will show me. Hey, yeah, look at that. That communication went offline. Um, if I span this, you actually can see this better. Let's do that. Uh, like that, okay? So you can see, hey, this panel went offline. That's why we lost communication, right? So you can have more data in there. And here's some of the other options for that. What else there? Uh, card number, I'm looking for a specific person. I can go and search for a particular card number, first, last name, full name, inbox number, right? Department, if I'm using that in there. Um, building, I'm looking for a report of a particular building, right? I can go and look for that. Uh, and this is if I have building information assigned to people, okay? So I can, I have to go here and say, hey, my main office, let's see if I have any, any event in there. And my, my not there, I got some, okay? Because this, this uh, identities have this building main office assigned to their record. This is not the hardware, this is the identity itself. And the same goes for division site, uh, identity type. I'm looking for contractors. So I just wanna see events for all my contractors and is calculating. Hopefully I bring something. I might or might not have contractors in my, in my system. It's taking a while. Anyway, so you, you get the idea what this is capable, right? Uh, no, I didn't have any data in contractors. Uh, I think I got an employees though. You notice that every time I change, I have to save that, right? If you don't save it, you're not gonna get anything on the report there. So employees, I do have data. So this could be utilized to you know, separate my contractors, visitors or 10 people, whatever that is, right? Um, and so that's basically some of the information. As I said, I prefer to use just date range here, set the number of dates that I want, and then export this to Excel with a full set of data, nothing filtered, and then in Excel, go ahead and filter that information out. I think it's, it's so much faster because I have the full load of data there on the Excel side, and all I have to do is just, you know, whatever I need, I'm looking for a particular person, just go and add filters into Excel, much simpler, right? Like this, you can just go ahead and click in Excel, Look how fast it is. Just do that. Excel is going to pop up or not. There you go. Come on. All right, great. Then that, span that a little bit, add some filters. And let's say I'm looking for any door, any deactivated card event. Just that. Boom, right there. All the events. Uh, 1,047 out of the 2,000. So people are just abusing my system right now, right? Or I'm looking for um, a particular person. You saw me doing this before. 
Now it's Excel, right? I'm not doing anything in ACM anymore. There, Mickey and Mini. This is the time right here, the reader name, right? The door, the type of event, the category of that event or event type, the number of their credential, last first name, and any special note that comes up from that event. If it's a normal valid badge, there is nothing. If it's an activator or something that's wrong with the badge, then it will show you here. In this case, this badge is inactive. That's why it's showing that message. Okay. Um, let's take this one offline. So again, depending in which report you go in, so let's go ahead and take a look at a different one. His audit, you will see that the type of events, let me clear this up so it makes it easier on us. The types of, of events, you see now this is different, right? The types of information I get now is different from, uh, from a, so now I have operators. So I'm looking for a particular operator. So here is Andrew. So let's go ahead and save that and do a refresh and this should, no data there, okay. But it will give you information uh, if if the operator has changed anything in the system, it will display that information here. So now I feel obligated to show you one that actually has. Let's see. There, okay. So here's an example. He went in here and did what? Uh, he changed a user. Uh, let's get something simple here. He created a, uh, a user, he changed an attribute and a role from nothing and give him full uh, building access um, into that record, okay? So you basically just see the before and after how the record was changed. And you can do this for any user that is in there. So point is, depending on the report, these options will be different okay and the the information we display also different look at how many how many columns i have in this one and you will see that this is pretty limited in what types of fields i can search on okay any other questions okay well, folks, thanks for coming. Uh, I hope this was uh, informative. Uh, stay tuned. Um, before we go, Rob, are you online? If you are, can you give us a sneak peek what you're going to talk about on Wednesday? Sure. Can you hear me? Oh, you can hear fine. Excellent. So on Wednesday, we're going to, going to cover initial installation. So uh, kind of getting back to basics. Uh, but what I find uh, when I look at systems out there is um, a lot of the systems have not been set up properly. Uh, things like backups are missed, you know, no time servers, no DNS servers, things like that. So we're going to kind of go over that in depth and uh, I'll pass along some tips and tricks along the way. And what time is your meeting? It will be 12 central time. 12 Central, folks. So 12, uh, mine is 12 Eastern. Rob is 12 Central and Jared is 12 Pacific. Okay. Thanks for coming. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks, Tony.